Hi, welcome to my group's video presentation. Our title in this assignment is Leptospirosis. Here I introduce to you my group mates, Sushan, Wansin, Ariel, Fatin, Tiffany, and myself, Yijing. Leptospirosis, also known as rat urine disease, as it is commonly associated with rats, first case of leptospirosis in human was in the year 1925 in Malaysia. The pathogen causing the infection is Leptospira interrogans. Infection occurs through direct contact with infected animals or their urine. It is called zoonosis because it is transmitted from animals to humans. Main animal reservoir is rodents, specifically rats, other than dogs, rabbits, birds, and more. Leptospirosis is presumed to be the most widespread zoonosis in the world with incidence higher in warm climate countries with high rainfall than in temperate regions. The disease is seasonal occurring the most in summer or fall. Those are the three exposures contribute to getting the infection and in Malaysia, most cases are linked to visiting waterfalls. These are the estimation of the cases occurring worldwide annually and there are 86 outbreaks and 30 death cases in Malaysia as of 2016. So leptospirosis can be transmitted to humans through cuts and abrasions of the skin or through the mucous membrane of the eyes, nose and mouth with contaminated water. An individual can be infected when in contact with infected organism, with infected urine or contaminated media such as food or animal bathing. Other than that, it is also considered as an occupational hazard for people who work outdoors, such as farmers and animal caretakers. This disease has also been associated with recreational activities, such as kayaking, and it can also be due to household exposure, such as dogs and domesticated livestock. So moving on to pathogenesis, leptospheres invade the body after penetrating exposed mucous membranes or damaged skin. After an incubation period of 4 to 20 days, Leptospirus circulate in the blood and replicate in many tissues including the liver, lungs and central nervous system for 7 to 10 days. Damaged organs may take some time to return to normal function after treatment. However, in some cases, severely damaged organs may not recover, leading to chronic disease or death. Despite clearance from the blood, Leptospirus may remain in immunologically privileged sites including the eye for weeks to months. So most of the serotypes have the same pathogenic mechanism and they are associated with particular animals. For example, L. pomona and L. interrogans are seen in cattle and pigs, while L. canicola is associated with dogs. Several candidate virulence factors have been identified that might contribute to the pathogenesis of leptospira infection. So one of the virulence factors is hemolysins, which lies red blood cells and other membranes. Another one is ethnicial molecules, which helps leptospirus to attach the host cells in order to penetrate, disseminate, and persist in mammalian host tissues. Other relevance factors also include lipopolysaccharide and outer membrane protein. Let's get back to the signs and symptoms. Okay, generally, leptospirosis can be associated with high and blood fever, headache, chills, muscle aches, muscle stiffness, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, rashes, red eyes, and even jaundice. There are two phases of leptospirosis. After the first phase, the patient may recover for a time, but it may develop the symptoms again in an immune-mediated phase. If a second phase occurs, it is more severe and the person may actually have jaundice, kidney or liver failure, or even meningitis. Irregular heartbeat, lung problems, red eyes. This phase is also known as this real disease. Created using Powtoon.